Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, I want to start off by thanking my friend Josh for lighting a fire under my ass to finally edit all the footage from uh, prepping and painting the bus. So I did that last night. So now I have space on my memory cards to keep filming uh, as I work on the bus. Because uh, I ran out of space with all the footage from those two videos and I've just been working without filming. So, now we get to keep uh, documenting the journey. Uh, as you can see, I have removed the rear air conditioning and out of the frame, uh, not so much, right there. You can see where I removed the front air conditioning unit. So, I'll just get everything up to speed on what I've been doing and did not record. Uh, for the most part, there may be some flashbacks in, in here. Um, so, I had the refrigerant drained out of the air conditioning lines. So, the rear air conditioning and the side air conditioning. Uh, I got the refrigerant drained at a mechanic shop. Uh, that way, when I opened up the lines, it's not just releasing... Uh, refrigerant into the atmosphere, which is just a super gnarly greenhouse gas, and um, I would be a really shitty person if I did that. Um, they were cool enough to uh, do it for free. Um, I gave the, the tech that did it a couple of bucks um, for his time. Uh, but yeah, they were super cool, uh, I think, because they knew that I would have to get the lines recharged at some point, and that shit is like... $40 a pound of refrigerant and uh, This had seven pounds of refrigerant which apparently is a ton because the technician Was absolutely floored by how much refrigerant that was um, So anyway got those lines drained. I got the air conditioning units out um, the one on the side here is uh, I still have the lines connected because I'm gonna keep that one uh, I'm just going to move it forward over the driver's seat. But what I've done is completely removed the rear air, rear AC, removed the front AC, and um, I took out the wall panels, as you can see. Um, so I had to take out some screws and then use a, uh, use a grinder to cut through where it's riveted underneath the window frame. Um, because otherwise I'd have to drill out like, I don't know, like a thousand rivets. No, not that many. But I'd have to drill out a ton of rivets, and then it would also, um, the rivets are riveted from the outside, so then I'd have a bunch of holes, uh, on the outside of the bus, which we don't want. So I just cut those off. Uh, got the wall panels removed. The insulation from the walls, uh, is out, so that's just bare metal to the outside of the bus. That's just the, the exterior skin. Um... And I had rails running along the sides here because it was a it was a this was a handicap bus, so it had a bunch of uh, rails for adjustable uh, mounting points, and so I had to get those out, and then they were mounted by riv nuts. So once the rail was out, I had to. Um, get the riv nuts out. So I grinded two uh, perpendicular slits into the, each of the riv nuts and then just went at it with a, a hammer and a crowbar and sheared the heads off of the riv nuts. Um, so that pretty much brings us up to speed with where we are today. I've got most of the screws out for the ceiling panels already. You can kind of see in the back that I already got the rear ceiling panel out because I got a little excited. Um, but I saved the rest of the ceiling panels for when I had um, space to film. So we're gonna take out the last remaining screws. Uh, we're also gonna, I'm gonna cut, uh, nope, that's out of frame, so you can't see it. But uh, some of the lines from the front AC go through a hole in a ceiling panel. So I'm going to cut an access way uh, in that ceiling panel so that the those lines can just slide out. Um, but basically, 
my hope is for today to just get a nice time lapse of taking out the ceiling panels and the insulation. And then uh, this will be basically gutted except for the floor, which will be its whole own thing. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan. That's what I've been doing. And uh, let's start the, the ceiling removal time lapse. So now that the ceiling panels are out, <laughs> uh, we got this fiberglass insulation, so we're gonna mask up because uh, that stuff is not good to breathe in. Um, I, they, may, they have made it a lot safer uh, since fiberglass insulation started being used. Um, and this was this is a 2006 bus, so I'm get, I'm pretty sure that this is uh, well after uh, the time when um, fiberglass insulation made the switch to much safer. But it's still good to be careful. So I got gloves, mask, uh, and we're gonna just pull this out, start loading it in trash bags, and then take it to big old trash bin. But what I just noticed, so this is right where. Um, this is right where the uh, the front AC, the roof unit is. Um, I believe that's the, is that the evaporator or the condenser? Um, I think that's the condenser up top. Uh, and so they sealed it with like a spray foam, like great stuff. There's something in here. Look at that. So that's, there's a rivet right there, an unused rivet. Um, and I don't know what this is, some kind of packet of something? It almost looks like oatmeal. I don't know, I'm gonna see what that is. Let's dig that out. It's like a treasure hunt. building this bus doing that part they ate their lunch and then left the fod in the bus this has been here since the bus was built that's that's absolutely absurd that's so funny is this what archaeologists feel like I get it. I get it. That was exciting, and this is like nothing. and the insulation 
isolation out. Um, I didn't do a time lapse of me scraping out all of the like insulation that was stuck to the. They did some kind of like a like spray adhesive and then stuck the insulation to it, and so a lot of it would, like was still stuck to the ceiling. So I just used um, uh, like a putty knife, one of the the big putty knives. Actually, here it is. Use this and just scraped it off the ceiling as best I could. Um, you would probably see at the end of that last time lapse that uh, there was like a lot of uh, insulation still hanging down. But you can see now that it's mostly gone. There's just like a tiny bit stuck to the uh, stuck to the ceiling. So uh, continuing with the demolition, uh, I'm gonna get out the. The wheelchair lift back right there and then hopefully be able to get to the started on the floor today the floor I'm expecting to be one of the harder parts of this project um, but yeah in the meantime I'm actually going to disconnect the forward air conditioning this one here uh, come over here you can see uh, I'm gonna disconnect this and this uh, they've already been drained uh, if you follow the bus on Instagram you saw that I took it to a shop and got the refrigerant drained so I'm not leaking uh, greenhouse gases uh, by opening this up it's just uh, pressurized with air and then there's like oil in the system so I've got the towel here to catch the oil that's gonna leak out um, I'm basically just going to crack those open and let that depressurize so that I can disconnect it and uh, move stuff around. So uh, it's going to be hot and it's sunny today so I don't think I'm going to start moving the, uh, the roof part of the unit uh, today. But uh, we'll see where the day takes us. Okay, so we got these lines off um, and they weren't pressurized like I thought they were going to be which means um, both air conditioning units are part of the same system. So when we took the one out from over there, where that dangly thing is, um, and that depressurized, uh, it depressurized the whole system, which explains why it took so long for that to depressurize um, and why there was no uh, depressuring that happened when I took these off. But now, in order to fully disconnect it, you have to disconnect the electrical and if I wanted to not cut it, I'd have to like take apart this whole thing. You can kind of see that the wires go in there, and uh, like I'd have to take out this coil and to get to those to disconnect them. And all these are nice and color coded, so I'm just gonna snip these off, and then I will wire them back together when uh, we put this back in up over there. Okay, so to get the, uh, the lift out, we're going to identify where the bolts are. As you can see we got four on this side and that's what we'll start with. We'll worry about the other ones after we handle these four because uh, these are going to be easier to access from back under here. Uh, and so what I've already noticed is these two are pretty easy to access. This one's easy to access. But this one is, you actually gotta, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there's this plate here. So we gotta take this battery out and we're gonna get this battery out so then we can access that panel to get this bolt out.
Okay, so I think I've got a good game plan here to get this out. Because, as you know, I'm doing this by myself. And it's a big hydraulic lift. Very heavy. Even I couldn't safely lift that out of the bus. Um, I don't think. Maybe if push came to shove, I'd have some kind of adrenaline boost and get it, but I don't think so. Really doubt it. Anyway, uh, I've got the lift lowered out like this, and while these bolts on this side are still connected, I'm going to lower it down because when it's leveraged out like this, the bolts on this side aren't really holding anything. Um, but the bolts on this side are. They're pretty much holding everything in. So even though it's all disconnected, it comes with a manual operation option because if there's ever a loss of power and you need to you know, get a student in a wheelchair out of the bus, you need to be able to do so. Um, so by lowering it down and using uh, just the manual release, having it supported on the ground out there, I'll then be able to have it essentially lift itself out of the bus. Because once it gets unbolted, then I can just kind of coax it forward and have the hydraulics collapse as if it's trying to lift, but it's actually just gonna be collapsing itself outside the bus. Um, now that I think about it, I should probably lower it onto one of these pallets. That might make it easier to move around. Let's do that. So um, while uh, doing the, all the demolition and stuff, gutting the inside, um, I, I like to take it out for a drive every weekend. Um, that way, you know, I can keep, you know, get some good airflow through the engine, uh, keep everything lubricated and all that fun stuff. But after taking out the handicap lift, um, I went to take it for a drive the next day and I couldn't release the parking brake. Then found out there was uh, an interlock connected to the handicap lift, not allowing the parking brake to be released when it thought the handicap lift was extended. So, I had to figure out how to, to fix that. I found a bulletin um, from the manufacturer that was sent out with how to retrofit uh, that interlock system into um, buses that were already in service when the uh, the interlock like law was applied in 2009 and this bus is a 2006 so it didn't have the interlock from the factory so I found the bulletin of how to add it and then use that to figure out how to um, how to bypass it and it was actually really easy and so I can show you guys it's right here on this, I should have known, it's where they wrote interlock on the, in the engine bay. And so there was two of these right here. And what I did is I connected this line. I'll actually, I'll throw up a picture of what it looked like before. So take a good look at that. And now back to here. So I uh, connected the two orange lines and then I ran this black line directly into here. And that was it. It worked. So, uh, yeah. Now back to more demolition.
are going to take these rails out of the floor. Um, they are bolted all the way through the floor of the bus and there's nuts that you can access from the underside. Uh, so Robert's going to come help me out with that after I get them all loosened up. So first, I'm going in with the, what's that? I think it was 3 sixteenths. Yep, 3 sixteenths uh, hex bit. And then I'm going to clear them out with this little flathead screwdriver because some of these have, you know, 15 years of uh, dirt just smashed into them. So pick them out with the screwdriver, and then hit them with the impact to just get them loose and spinning and make sure that uh, there aren't any that need to be drilled out, uh, which would be a nightmare if I had to drill all these out. There's probably 50 in here. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna go hit all these, loosen them up, and then I'm gonna get Robert to come help me again and uh, he'll hit them from the top with the impact while I get under the bus and hold the nut from the underside with, uh, with a wrench. So, yeah, time for more time, for more time lapse. So it is the next day. Um, I didn't film Robert and I getting those rails out because it would have kind of just been like the same as that time lapse you just saw of me breaking loose all of the all the bolts. Um, but basically, I got under the bus and used a wrench or, or a socket, depending on which one it was and how far I could reach. Uh, and so I got under the bus and Robert was in here. And we just went and we did all the rails on both sides. We estimated to be around 400 bolts. It was a lot, it took the whole day. Uh, so when people say that if you get a bus with handicap rails, it's gonna suck, uh, that is accurate. Um, we were able to bang out all but 27 of them. And that last 27 were, let's see, right in here. And you can see where I started to make cuts with the grinder. Um, but so these ones were above the gas tank and I couldn't reach from underneath because the gas tank was in the way. So for those ones, um, what I did is I, here, I can show you, you can kind of see what I did if you look at it here. Um, I cut the rail down the center of the bolt and I cut the rail in half. And so then I was able to pull out this side of the rail, uh, which didn't have any bolts in it. So then half the bolt is holding down the rest of the rail and half is exposed. Then I went in with a grinder at an angle and cut the head off the bolt. And then I did that with the next one. I pried off this piece and just went all the way down. And uh, that was the fastest way I could figure it out because I tried drilling out the heads, but they're steel. They're, they're hardened steel bolts. And uh, so the drilling did not work well. Um, so yeah, it took a whole day, uh, probably the hardest day that I have spent on the bus. The fact that it was like 112 was a big contributing factor. Um, as you can tell by my glistening skin, it's already over 100 degrees today also. It's 1130 and oh no, it's right at 100 degrees. So. Um, That's where we're at, and uh, now we're gonna peel up the laminate 
and then uh, cut out the plywood, and then this thing will be totally gutted. Okay, so as you could see from that time lapse, that was very difficult. Um, this glue that they used is stuck very well. It's over 100 degrees, and you know I waited till it was hot to try and peel this stuff up because heat and adhesives, you know, uh, they don't uh, like each other. So with the extra heat, it's a little easier to peel up. But as you can see, it was still very difficult. And I'm not exactly a weak person, so. Um, that was, that was uh, tough, but I have an idea. So if we, I have, you know, this strip of laminate peeled up and we can see where all the seams are. So we can see there's a seam here and there's a screw on each side holding the wood down. We can see we've got screws back here at the edge and then um, like one, a random one in the middle, and then seam screws, seam screws. So I think if I just peel up the laminate along those seams, I should be, I, that should reveal all of the screws. And then I could just pull up the plywood without having to remove all of the laminate, which would make things a lot easier. And most of this wood isn't gonna be reusable anyway. Uh, so all I really need, I'm gonna save some of this plywood from the handicap area, or the wheelchair area, because this is all one thickness. Uh, where all the rails were um, was uh, counterboard. So, um, I'm gonna save some of that plywood for later on the build. Uh, and you'll see what I do with that in a few months, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think by following the seams, I'll be able to get to all the screws without needing to pull up all of the laminate, which will save me time and energy and hydration. Because the more time I spend out here, the more I sweat more fluids I lose. Which reminds me, always have plenty of water. I've got a gallon here in the last couple of days. I've been drinking more than one of those. Uh, so when you're doing manual labor, especially if it's hot, stay hydrated. It's very easy. Uh, just keep a water bottle with you. Um, that's not negotiable, just do it. getting the floor out as you can see and um, I didn't film it but I got like a burst of energy and an idea um, so I used the plywood from the floors and covered up the open window holes because we had a lot of monsoons and um, well I got the floor out last week uh, last weekend I knew monsoons were coming so I put the plywood up on the walls and it seems to have done pretty well because I'm here this weekend and uh, everything looks good. So yeah, it's also nice. It's kind of like, it's nice and cozy in here now. You got the less light coming in, which means a little bit less heat. Um, but yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to another day on the bus build. Um, 
where I am converting this bus into a home. And uh, today, I am going to be removing the bus wiring. You can see right behind me, the end of the wires right there. And so these wires loop all the way around to the back of the bus over into the main panel. Um, so what I'm doing is removing all of the wires that are no longer necessary. So basically everything except for the blinkers, brake lights, and reverse. Uh, so to do that, I made a little table. I got my notebook. I'm going to label each of the wires and then follow them back into uh, what's called the rat's nest. Um, and you'll see why it's called that when I show it to you later. Um, so my plan is to start from here on this side where the wires end, the, the big loop of wire ends, and then go one at a time and just follow it all the way back. There's a lot of connections that I'm going to have to follow the wires through. Um, so this is going to be pretty tedious, but it's something that unless you want a bazillion wires that you got to, like, hide away. Um, it's something you, you definitely have to do. Um, after I remove each wire, I am going to start the bus and make sure that I didn't just remove a wire that trips some kind of interlock that prevents me from starting or um, releasing the parking brake. Because as you saw in, I think, the last video, um, removing certain things can prevent the bus from moving, uh, like we saw with the handicap lift. Uh, so by testing if I can start and release the parking brake after each wire, if something does happen, I'll know which wire caused it and then I can figure out a workaround for it. Um, so yeah, basically that's going to be it. Okay, so this is the first wire. We traced this. It was from a flasher that has since been removed because this is no longer a school bus. And we're gonna take it to this wiring harness here and we can see that it goes into the center slot of this harness. So we look at the other side of the connector and we can see the one that comes out of the center there. So now, we're going to take some tape, we'll take a strip of tape, wrap it around that, that center wire, and label it 1, because on the sheet here, wire number 1 is the yellow flasher wire that we're going to remove. So then we're going to do that for each of the wires here, so we'll have a whole bunch of labels on this side of the wires, then we can remove the harness, and then we can keep tracing it back from here. And basically it's going to be a lot of repetition doing that same thing until we get all the way back over to there where the wires come out. All right, so uh, day two of removing wiring, and uh, as you can see here, removed quite a lot of wiring. And then over there, we've got all the flexible conduit that I've removed so far. Um, so I have narrowed things down to only the essentials. Um, the bus still starts, parking brake releases, all the flashers, or all the blinkers and brakes work. The, the school flashers are cut out. And you can see here, um, I brought back a whole bunch of wires all the way to here 
and got them cut out. Because right in there is where the rat's nest is. Um, like I mentioned before, and you'll see it in a bit. But first, um, I'm going to remove this, this driver's seat so that I can get to the that box right back there and I'll have easy access to all those wires from the back side so I can see what needs to get cut out uh, completely and then you know what fuses can be removed as a result of that. Um, and my plan is once I have all of the non-essential wires removed then I can go back and follow the um, the essential wiring and simplify it because like if you look here it's kind of a confusing mess because some wires come from the back and the ones coming from the front are just to control the hydraulic door or not hydraulic the air door and those go right in here but some of these wires come from the back and then like loop together here and it's very confusing and you've got two wires running when you only need one in some places. Uh, so after all of the non-essential wires have been removed, we can go back and trace it and it's nice because uh, they're all color coded. So. Um, in addition to matching the, the holes on the harness connectors, uh, you're also pretty solid just connecting the same color. But be extra careful when you're doing this uh, to make sure that you're connecting the right wires. Um, so don't just go by color, because there are wires that are the same color but serve different purposes. So, um, yeah. But then basically, I'll be able to simplify that wiring and uh, cut out even more length, so then we're left with uh, just what's required. As promised, the rat's nest. Pull this panel back. That is the rat's nest. Um, and I presume you can see why it is called that. So that's the back side. Um, so now let's go out here admire the paint job real quick and over to this panel where now this is where we're going to be working from I think most of the wires that we pulled are coming from yeah so you can kind of see you might be able to see a little light through there yeah that's the inside and so this conduit which will cut off uh, has the wiring for all that stuff we pulled. So we'll find which ones we can cut out, cut them out, and then, I don't know, I think I can unscrew this here, and then we can follow the wires further and then back up into here where we can keep cutting stuff out. Um, now, very important, um, at this point, I mean, you probably should have done this before, but definitely at this point, um, disconnect the negative from the battery so that you don't short anything out or hurt yourself. So, got the battery in here, disconnect the negative, and then we'll be good to go. Um, I forgot to do that, and I got lucky. I was messing with the switch for the defroster fan, and uh, accidentally shorted 
that, but luckily it just blew the fuse. So I just need to get a new fuse for that. Um, not that I'll need the defroster anytime soon. Plus, uh, the heater hasn't been working anyway, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, I think it might just be one of the valves are closed. Uh, but anyway, that's for another time. So disconnect the negative, and then keep following the wires, and cut out the ones you don't need. And then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So, as you saw, I cut out a whole bunch of stuff, um, and now I've got these crimp caps, which uh, all the wires that I've cut, I'm going to crimp these on the ends so that they can't accidentally, like, cross each other or, like, touch the frame and short something out, so it'll be electrically insulated. And, uh, yeah, as you might be able to hear, it is raining today. So it is nice and cool inside the bus, um, but it's also very relaxing. So uh, we'll see how much I get done today before um, I decide to call it. But yeah, we've got, it's still kind of a mess of wires, but um, I don't, as I said, I don't want to mess with it uh, any further. Um, I know my limit, so I'm going to cap it off where it's at and then uh, just kind of organize the wires as much as I can, and uh, and that'll be pretty much it for the rewiring. All right, um, everything is wired back together and I'm pretty proud of this right here let's see if I can show you right here I got all of the wires that were connected into however many harnesses those were it was all in that panel there with all the wire I pulled out I was able to get everything in here. So we've got the wires coming from the control panel and the wires going out to all the lights and also the air door. So yeah, pretty stoked about that. Now the moment of truth. If I can get the keys out of my pocket. I already reconnected the uh, the battery um, because, as I pointed out earlier, you want to disconnect that while you're working on the electrical. So, all right, we got power. I just need to wait for that. All right. Okay. There we go. Air pressure is good. This all seems to be working. So now, we've got left blinkers. And if we look in this mirror here, we've got that blinker. And let me see if I can stabilize this enough. That blinker. So we got our left blinkers are all good. We'll go to the right side. Right blinkers there. Side blinker. Back right blinker. And let me turn that off. Now emergency flashers. Good. Good. Good, and good. So, that, and now down under here. Got lights in the panel. Headlights are on. And, let's see, what else? So, turn that off. 
brakes are good. And emergency brake is off. And it's back on. All right, so everything is working. And oh, actually, forgot to test the air door. So let's see, put the button on the steering wheel. Good. Open it back up. Good. Sweet. So, yeah, back over to this harness here. I'm gonna let the engine run for a little bit, charge the battery up. But here, so we've got that harness I showed you. Um, but if we kind of follow it towards the back, as you can see here, this jumble of wires, um, we've got stuff kind of crisscrossing into different harnesses. So I want to simplify this and shorten the overall length of wire so then we can have it come up here and then we'll have the air door go across that way and we'll have all the blinkers go back across this way. Um, so yeah, now it's just a matter of uh, just shortening up the wires and uh, matching the color on that harness. That's gonna be pretty easy at this point. So yeah, you don't have to like tear everything out from the control panel. Um, just kind of, if you're not super comfortable with electrical um, or you're worried about something, I would, whoa, I zoomed way in. Um, <laughs> uh, just worry about the back stuff and just kind of cut out the excess up to the control panel and then cap it off. Um, and then you'll, you're, you know that you're good to go. So uh, I did a, you know, a bit more than that, but not too much more than that. Uh, I got a little bit under the, the dashboard uh, pulling out speaker wires and stuff, but uh, it's a little more technical uh, going through the control panel. And like you saw already, I didn't go all the way through the control panel. That was uh, too much. So yeah, or if you're really uncomfortable with the electrical, just leave it. Put it in the wall and uh, forget about it. So um, yeah, that is pretty much it. I think I'll call the video there because the rest is just going to be um, cutting and splicing wire. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching uh, how I did the electrical and uh, like and subscribe if you want. Uh, yeah, we're just going to keep this going and thanks for watching. Have a great day.